In this lesson, we will be talking about the kinetic molecular theory of gases. So again, we're talking about gas molecules. Kinetic has something to do with the energy of motion. Of the molecules, for example, nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, okay, um, and it's a theory. So pretty much it's a theory that helps us understand how gas molecules move and how they move as we change the amount of energy we put in. So first, let me give you a disclaimer that all these postulates that tell us how gas molecules move is based on the ideal gas. The ideal gas is the perfect gas. Okay, so the, the, the real gas as opposed to the ideal gas might not conform to all these parts, but will be really close. But if you had a perfect gas, how would they behave? And they would behave like this. First, postulate would be gas molecules are very tiny. So really, really small, you, can, you can't see it at all. Okay, second, gas is mostly space. So if you take your room and you take all the little particles of gas molecules and you put them in your hand, you will not even be able to see them. Okay, it says gas is mostly space. Gas particles are so small compared to the distance between them that the volume of the individual particles can be assumed to be zero. So those are zero volume. So it's mostly space. Number three, particles are in constant random motion colliding with the walls of the container exerting pressure. So how are these molecules moving? Okay, they're moving randomly. Okay, and I wanted to show you the different modes of motion. So in this little application, it shows you how molecules move. First of all, you should know that they have a translational motion where they go up and down, side to side in a line, like on a track of a train, for example, a train track, okay? Also, if you give energy to this molecule, you can also use that energy to spin the molecule. So here you can see it's spinning, okay? Also, if you give energy to this system, to this molecule by heating it up, you can also make it vibrate. So you can make it vibrate this way, and there are very many modes of um, vibration. So you can see them, the bonds changing from one side to another. So when you're heating up a, a substance or a molecule, it doesn't mean they're going to go faster. You can also make them spin faster and you can also make them vibrate more. So you have to put all, all you have to consider all of those motions when you're heating up a molecule or a substance. Okay. So they're randomly moving, and you can have bending, stretching, asymmetric stretching. You can also make them rotate, and you can also make them move in a translational motion where they're just going from one end of the room to another, okay? The fourth postulate to this theory is that particles are assumed not to attract or repel each other. These are water molecules, and the force between them is called an intermolecular force, an IMF, called hydrogen bonding. Okay, in a gas phase, these molecules are not allowed to attract or repel, okay? Which means the IMF between them is not supposed to be there, okay? Number five, the kinetic energy is proportional to the Kelvin temperature of the gas. What that means is if you heat up the, the molecule or the substance, as you increase the temperature, the kinetic energy will also increase, okay? This picture just shows you what happens. This is, um, I just want to show you the Kelvin scale, okay? Here we have volume, and you can see and the temperature on the x-axis. As the temperature gets higher and higher, it gets hotter, the gas molecules expand. You can see the volume increase. If you were to extrapolate the volume to, so that there is zero volume, 
Okay, and that's not really possible to do because there's still gas molecules in there. But if you were to take data up to a certain point and you can no longer to take, take data, you can lengthen the line or extrapolate. You will hit the x-axis where there is zero volume. And that x-axis is negative 273 degrees Celsius. Okay, we call that zero Kelvin. Okay, so that is the lowest temperature that can be theoretically achieved. So Kelvin always goes from zero on up. It, you will never get negative Kelvin because zero is the lowest. So it's always a positive number. Okay, so as the Kelvin temperature increases, so does the kinetic energy of the substance. It'll move faster, okay? Now, something about the kinetic energy. I told you before that there are different modes of motion. So not only will they move faster, they can also rotate more or they can vibrate in place. So they can also vibrate. Okay, so this little chart is very important when looking at kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, this is, um, this is number of molecules. So in this, under this curve, there are 25 gas molecules. And under this curve, there are also 25 gas molecules. The number of gas molecules is not changing, okay? When, you, when it's cold, the speed of the molecules is very slow, the average speed. When it is hot, the average speed is also is going to be faster. So you might wonder, why did it get flatter and broader? The reason it got broader is because the energy you're putting in is making the molecules rotate and vibrate as well, which means it's not only going into the translational motion. Okay, But this curve does prove that if the molecules are hot, they will go fast on average, okay? So let me um, summarize. The ideal gas law, the perfect gas, behaves this way. First, they're tiny. The volume they take up is small. They have random motion. They exert pressure. They're not allowed to attract or repel. And as they get hotter, they move faster. Okay, those are the five postulates of the kinetic theory. The ideal gas conforms to all of them. Okay, but in reality, they may not conform. Okay, the reason is, let's say you're, um, you're an engineer and you have pipes going underground. And in these pipes, you're putting methane gas. Methane gas is the gas that you put in your cooktops, in your stove, okay? If there is so much pressure in this tube, because this maybe let's say it's a very small tube, then this gas might not behave ideally. Because if you pressurize it, let's say you make the tube really small, the, mo the molecules might come together and turn into liquid because the IMF, the dispersion force, gets closer together and it gets stronger if, they, if, you, if you squeeze the molecules together. Okay, so in reality, it may not conform to all these parts. But you are pretty close at the right conditions. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that the pressure is very low. Pressure is low. That means you're not squeezing them together. Okay, to make it really low, you have to make the container really big, big volume. Okay. So in this scenario, as an engineer, if you want the gas to behave ideally, you have to make the pipes bigger. So then they won't attract. They can't see each other if you don't squeeze them together. Okay. Another way you can make it turn into a real gas is if you make it really hot. Okay. So here's a scenario. If they're really cold, aren't they going to come together and eventually attract? because they're slowing down and then they see each other. But if you make it really hot, then they're moving past each other so fast they can't even attract or repel. So you're going to make it really hot.